In this video, we'll be talking about the four types of rental real estate and which is best for you. Hey, what's up? I'm Mark Terry Bellini, and I'm all about achieving financial independence through real estate investing and online business. So if you're new to the channel and you're looking to achieve financial freedom for yourself, be sure to like and subscribe and you will not miss a thing. So there's generally four types of rental real estate and which one you choose kind of depends on your level of risk tolerance and how much work you're looking to put in if you want it to be more active or more passive of an investment. So uh, so to start things off, we have the first one here is a single family home. And I'll kind of go over the pros and cons here. So the first pro would be less turnover. So usually people that rent a home are looking to stay for quite a while. And so you don't have as much turnover cost or expense. So that's one major benefit. Um, also, there's straightforward financing. If you're looking to buy a single family home, there's a lot of financing options. You can, you can buy it as a primary residence, live in it for a little bit, and then turn it into a rental. Uh, you can buy it as a straight rental. Um, there's a lot of financing options for a single family home, so they're easier to get into. Um, there's also higher appreciation. So people are, it's, it's tied to the consumer market, so people are willing to pay for a primary home. Um, whereas with other property types, you know, it's kind of based on the income of the property. So um, yes, there's good appreciation on single family homes. And one of the biggest negatives of a single family home rental is that if the tenant moves out and you don't have somebody to move in right away or soon afterwards, you're paying that mortgage uh, up until you can find a new tenant. So that could be a pretty big loss depending on you know how many people are living in the area how much demand there is how much um, you've saved uh, for vacancies and things of that sort so uh, just something to be aware of um, I believe single-family homes are a good investment but you just have to go into it kind of knowing the, the demand and, and what to expect with vacancies and such so number two is multifamily properties so multifamily just means more than one unit. So it could be a duplex, a uh, triplex, a fourplex, and above and beyond that. So smaller multifamily properties are one through four units. And you can actually finance those with a um, regular loan. So you can go to uh, any bank and be like, hey, I want to buy this fourplex and buy it as a primary residence. So you can live in one of the units and rent out the other three. As a great way to do it to get started to have more um, income from the different doors in the property um, once you get up beyond that that's going to be more commercial space but um, that basically helps you scale a lot faster so um, with multi-family properties one of the biggest benefits is higher profits so you have multiple doors in one location so that's just more profit centers uh, basically so that's uh, one good thing um, also, vacancies aren't quite as, uh, as much of an issue as, as a single family because if one person moves out, you have all these other doors, all these other people that are paying you rent and you're making income from each one. And so it kind of offsets that loss of that one vacancy or you know, however many vacancies there are. Um, so the more doors you have, you know, the less vacancies is, is an issue as much. So that, that kind of um, gives you a little bit of a buffer, so to speak. Um, and like I said earlier, it's also easier to scale. So instead of having like, if you're saving a bunch of money and you go out and buy one single family home, yeah, they can create some income, but if you buy like a multifamily, you know, you can buy multiple doors. Um, it, it's, you can scale a lot faster instead of buying like a house every year or two, you can, you know, save up for a little bit and buy like, you know, a property with like eight doors or 12 or 16 and, and really scale a lot faster that way. Uh, so that's one major benefit. Um, another benefit is um, uh, it's also central. So like if there's any maintenance issues, it's all in one, one place. So if you don't have to drive you know, across town to all these different properties to repair, do any repairs, it's all in one place. And so it's, it's kind of easier to maintain it in that way. That said, um, more properties is going to be more maintenance, so you're going to see you're going to be doing more repairs um, because it just is that's just how it works. You know, you have more properties, there's going to be more things going wrong, so more things to fix. Uh, just kind of comes with the territory. Um, another negative is that you're going to have higher turnover. People don't usually stay in an apartment 
for the long term. Um, they will hop around to different apartment complexes or eventually buy a home or just stay in an apartment for, you know, for school or, you know, maybe they're just there for work for a while or whatever it may be. People are, you're going to have higher vacancy um, issues going there. So uh, something to be aware of. The next one I have here is uh, number three, and that's condos and townhomes. And these are a, a decent way to get started because they are less expensive, generally speaking. You can get started in a townhome or a condo um, easier than a, than a house. Usually they're cheaper. Um, so you can do that. It has straightforward financing, just like a primary home. Um, another benefit is like, since it's part of a, a larger, um, like an HOA, you're not gonna have to deal with some of the exterior um, um, upkeep on the property and stuff. So that's one less thing you have to worry about. The biggest negative in my, uh, from my point of view is the HOA, because while they do kind of make things a little bit easier, uh, they, they do have pretty high fees depending on where you're purchasing. Uh, they could have really, really high fees, could be hundreds if not over $1,000 a month depending on where you buy. Um, so they can be very expensive and also restrictions. So you may purchase um, a condo or a townhouse, townhouse and they're okay with you renting it out and then all of a sudden they change their mind or um, they don't allow, if you wanna make it like a short-term stay or something like that, they don't allow that at all. Um, so there's a lot of these limitations that are kind of uh, can create issues with an HOA. So for that reason, personally, I'm not a big fan of that because uh, I don't want to be limited, basically. So, uh, so so those are some of the negatives for that one. And the last one I have here is commercial real estate. And this is more, um, like I said, anything above four units is considered commercial. Um, but in, this one is um, kind of like it's a little bit different because this is more like businesses. So if you buy a commercial building and it's for business or retail or whatever it may be. So there is a high income potential uh, for these kinds of properties. Um, they're also more passive. You don't have to, you know, fix things quite as much because the company that's renting out is kind of covering a lot of the maintenance and, and things of, like that. Um, and they're paying their ta the taxes and everything for the building. So not as much uh, hands-on as, as, as uh, residential. And then um, one of the negatives for commercial real estate and something that everyone can relate to is vacancy. So uh, there are a lot, of a lot of businesses out there that were doing really well and then uh, COVID hit and then, you know, completely went out of business because, um, you know, as soon as, as soon as the businesses left, they couldn't sustain the property anymore because of all the vacancies. So uh, that's, a, that's a major risk there, but uh, a good potential for profits as well. So those are the four. And what you choose kind of depends on, you know, what, how I said earlier, your level of risk tolerance and how passive or active you want it to be. So you just kind of have to, to gauge, you know, do you want the financing to be easy? Um, do you want low turnover, um, easier to maintain? You know, how much risk are you willing to take on? Just kind of like gauge all those things and decide what you're comfortable with and then just go for it. And then you're going to learn it along the way. But um, that said, I wouldn't, as a somebody who's completely new to this, I wouldn't jump into immediately into like a, you know, a 50 unit apartment complex. That's going to be a major learning curve and probably pretty difficult. I would probably start a little bit smaller to get your feet wet and then kind of go from there. So if you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.